I wanted to do a quick little uh, video about sociobiology. I don't want to get into too much depth. Um, I just wanted to just try to work out my general uh, take on the merits of, of the approach itself. Um, you know, and just a little background. Um, as Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection was uh, deepened by uh, our increased understanding of DNA, um, and the way genotypes and phenotypes are related, um, more and more scientists have been drawn to the idea that culture and society and psychology ought to be uh, reducible to our genetic inheritances. Um, in other words, society is a function of biology, which is a function of uh, selfish genes, as Dawkins would say, but a lot of um, sociobiology is based on the idea that evolution proceeds um, due to um, the genetic algorithm being selected by the environment um, based on its fitness, its ability to reproduce itself. And so therefore all of our behaviors and proclivities, our uh, tendencies, um, whether sexual or uh, intellectual, um, they, they all basically have genetic causes. Now, this is a strong version of sociobiology, and not all sociobiologists would say that this is necessarily the case. Some would admit that, of course, culture, to a certain extent, can override biological instinct, um, but of course they they wouldn't say that it's culture is is a completely different realm, and they would most likely you know if they're going to call themselves sociobiologists at all, they would most likely say that uh, any instance of culture seeming to override biology is really just a complexification of the relationship between a phenotype and an extended phenotype and the genotype. Um, it's more complexification than it is an actual uh, difference um, between you know human society and the biological world. And as far as it goes, I mean, look, Darwin's theory of evolution certainly has to change the way we understand what it means to be a human being. And I think the deepest implication of Darwin's theory is that we, all of us, are related, not just to each other as, as homo sapiens, but to every other species that exists on this planet. And, I mean, if that doesn't have profound ethical implications, I don't know what does. Um, so I'm by no means uh, against the idea that our society and our culture should acknowledge our biological inheritance. I just think that we need to understand uh, in a more coherent and holistic way, not in a mystifying sense, but in a uh, the whole, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, sort of sense, in the sort of sense that realizes that organisms, whole organisms, even whole uh, groups or societies of organisms, human or otherwise, play a causal role in what happens uh, throughout the evolutionary process. It's not just genes. That's not the only causal mechanism. Uh, genes always underdetermine uh, the phenotype, and the phenotype is uh, always underdetermining um, the culture and the society that it shares with, with others. Um, we cannot understand the biosphere in terms of individual genetic packets competing um, for reproductive success. We cannot understand it that way. We can look at certain slices of an ecosystem that way and gain useful insights. But this is a way of 
collecting uh, or a way of interpreting data on a very small scale if you want to understand life as a whole um, we cannot be genetic reductionists we can't because it's leaving out a whole bunch um, I've been reading uh, Daniel Dennett's book Darwin's Dangerous Idea and he has a uh, certainly it's a useful way of, of talking about this distinction between those who accept in his eyes Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection um, and who therefore see only cranes operating in nature you know resting on the solid firm ground of I, I guess physics and slowly building up uh, more and more complicated mechanisms based on that um, the, the crane people and and the other side would be the skyhook people the ones that don't accept Darwin's theory at least in Dennett's eyes and who are you know reaching for something transcendental something uh, to allow mind and consciousness and meaning and value and spirituality and purpose and um, you know all of these well all the things that we assume makes human beings special and life significant um, people who who are skyhook searchers are trying to get out of the idea or the implication um, that all of this this high level meaning could be just a product of a billion years worth of blind algorithmic uh, selection and um, I kind of after reading his book I don't want to fall into the trap of reaching blindly for skyhooks um, but I do want to question what ground then it thinks all of his cranes are resting upon does physics quantum physics does does our understanding of cosmology at this point really provide a solid ground for any cranes I mean it is more of an epistemological claim to say that we did have a resting place an ontological foundation for the crane of natural selection um, because to my mind just based on you know what William James for instance would call radical empiricism based on my direct experience not just my senses but my internal perception as well there is no ground there is no stable foundation upon which all my knowledge can rest there is only the next moment uh, and if I do not assert the desire to know and to interact with my world I will lose my knowledge um, that's a groundless way of relating to the process of knowing and being and I don't think it's a skyhook but, but neither is it a series of cranes um, it's a middle way it's a middle way so are we human beings cultural uh, interlocutors sharing ideas with each other are we biological organisms of course but what is a biological organism is a biological organism the um, socio-biological gene-centric way of doing theoretical biology no of course not theoretical biology of any kind is a human enterprise where human beings share a common conception of the world and interpret data uh, in order to fit into it. It doesn't have anything to do with an independent world and we can't make claims based on our culture about what reality is. Though there isn't a sharp line between our culture and the rest of life. Any such line would be just as artificial as assuming that um, all of the scientific papers written about biology about life are in fact all that life is so uh two seconds left ah.